Let's look at Arsenal's next five games, starting with the Europa League game against Eintracht Frankfurt on Thursday. Then uh, the three in the Premier League at Norwich City this weekend, at home to Brighton, then at West Ham before another trip to Standard Liège in the Europa League. Let's welcome in Don Hutchinson to the show. How are you doing, Don? Uh, better than Arsenal, I think, and better than Unai Emery <laughs> at the moment. Uh, I, I tell you what, it was a pretty shambolic draw, wasn't it, for them? over the weekend. Looking at those five games and the road ahead, how, how thin a string is Emery on at the moment, do you think? Yeah, I never think it's uh, very comfortable when you watch a manager struggling the way Unai Emery is. Uh, and he seems to be living off, uh, or game by game, um, he gets a good win, the pressure's off, he gets a bad loss or a bad draw in case in point at the weekend, then he's bang under pressure. Um, I think it's only a matter of time. I think it all depending on what the hierarchy at Arsenal are thinking. There's some you know, good managers out there, Max Allegri for one. Um, it just depends on how early they want to pull the trigger. I hope not for Unai Emery's sake. I think he's a very, very good manager. But I could just see signs of him actually struggling. I think he's struggling for his best 11. Um, the formation that he's playing doesn't suit the players. They're not playing with any swagger. They've got no confidence whatsoever. <laughs> And he is living by game by game. And you saw at the weekend, they really struggled and got very lucky against Southampton. Ian, what's your, what's your sense, big picture? Six games without a win now for Arsenal. <laughs> Patience wearing pretty thin. <laughs> it really is. So this is Arsenal's worst start to a Premier League season or to a top flight season for 37 years. Uh, they look all over the place at the moment. I think the key word is disconnect. I heard Alan Smith, the former Arsenal striker, use the word disconnect the other day about between manager and players, and I think there's a disconnect too between manager and fans. They were whistling him, there were derisive cheers uh, at the weekend, there were boos at the end of the game. I think it's falling apart. I don't think he's on thin ice, I think the ice is melting. I think they're already considering Mikel Arteta, who is Pep Guardiola's number two at Manchester City, and Max Allegri. Mm. How soon could this happen, Ali? I mean, could, could Norwich City this weekend, if that doesn't go well, be well, it? Well, here's the problem for Naiamity. All of those games that you just mentioned and that we put out on the screen, Arsenal should be winning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And because of the way that they're playing, it is likely that they may not win all of those games. In fact, that's the most likely scenario, that Arsenal will struggle in all of these matchups. And so when the expectation is that you're going to beat Norwich and you don't, well, we have a Southampton problem. Mm. We have, then again, a, a, a moment in which people are going to start measuring an IM and going to say, well, when is it a good time? When is it enough? Well, I think the situation right now is untenable. Uh, Unai Emery at, at this point, if you, in the cutaways, and, and it, was, it was very telling on, on, on the TV broadcast, the cutaways to him mm. in the sidelines while the Southampton game was going on looked like a man who was struggling to find not even the, the answers, the questions. Mm. And the answers to whatever questions were out on the field. He, in my mind, it felt like he was more concerned about, well, what am I going to have to answer in the press conference that is about to come? How do I defend this? How do I defend indefensible? And that, to me, feels like a guy who's truly on his way out. He knows it. He feels it. And more importantly, the players know it, and the players feel it as well. Mm. Listen, for me, I, I'm, I'm in total agreement. For, first of all, I, I'm not quite sure how Unai Emery is, is still in the job. Mm. But to Don's point, whenever it, it seems it's inevitable, or his firing is inevitable, he seems to put together a result. Mm. And to Ali's point, the next three games, very winnable. Norwich away, who've just beaten Everton, let's be honest, never mind that, Norwich are a decidedly poor team. <clears throat> and it was it Brighton at home. And again, as Don will, will attest, whenever you need a result, there's no better team to play than West Ham. <laughs> then, all of a sudden, you, you win those three games, you, you, you very well may find yourself in fifth, and the, the conversation changes. Right. And as much as the conversation may change, my opinion on, Allegri, uh, on, on Unai Emery mm. does not. I, I, I just feel he looks out of his depth. 
I have as, I, I had as much respect um, as anyone for, for him coming into this job, but it, it just looks too big for him right now. Well, the conversation is certainly very similar when it comes to Manchester United and Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. When you look at their next five games, John, uh, they're uh, at Astana in the Europa League, but the next three in the Premier League, home against Villa, home against Spurs. How about that? Jose Mourinho going there midweek, December the 4th, and then the Manchester derby the weekend following that before AZ Altmar. John, mm. uh, compare Solskjaer's situation, if we will, to Unai Emery. Are we talking about the same level of thin ice here? Uh, not quite. Um, I think Oli's got a little bit more time. Um, the worry for United fans is take the first 70 minutes of the game of the weekend against Sheffield United. They got out fought, they got out ran, they got bullied off the pitch. Sheffield United were a far better team. And don't let the eight minutes when they scored three goals cloud that performance. It was nowhere near a Manchester United performance. Having said that, mm. I could see what he's trying to do. I can see that he's trying to bring the youngsters through. It's the experienced players, in my opinion, that are not helping the youngsters. I played in the Liverpool side in the early 90s and 92 when we had a crop of youngsters coming through. And our experienced players helped us along the way so much. But when you're a young player and there's loads of young players in that United side, they are learning their way in life. They are learning the way around a football pitch, how to manage themselves on a daily basis. You don't know how to win you know, titles. You don't know how to win trophies or even get in the top four. It's difficult. So I can see what Oli's trying to do. Will he be the man that takes them back into the top four? Maybe. Will he be the man that takes them to the top? I probably doubt it. But you've got to give him time to try and progress this club and take the club further on. It might be a case of he's preparing you know, United to win titles for the next manager that comes through the door. Mm. Well, Ian, from the two stumbling ones to the humble one, the self-anointed humble one, Jose Mourinho <laughs> and his uh, first game in charge for Spurs. Uh, did you like what you see? And do you now believe that Spurs might have what it takes to actually end up in the top four after all? I doubt it, to be honest with you. They're a long way behind. They're, they're eight points adrift. They've got a lot of ground to make up. They've got 25 games to do it in. I mean, as Shaka was saying, West Ham are the ideal fixture <laughs> at the moment. They haven't won since goodness knows when. And usually when they play against Spurs, they are breathing fire. They absolutely hate Tottenham, the West Ham fans. And quite often they've put a dent in Spurs. But there was absolutely no sign of that from the beginning. So it was a bit of a gimme for Jose Mourinho. But so far, of course, he's he hasn't put a foot wrong. This is the usual Jose start, isn't it? He's all charm. He's saying it's not about me. He's saying all the right things. But I think you've got to give it 18 months. Will it be the same old story? Will it end in tears? I still think he's got questions to answer after what happened at Manchester United about whether now... Uh, the kind of tactics and style that he had that brought him so many trophies, whether that the, he can still win trophies or whether that style has become a bit outdated. Yeah, it's so often a sparkling star, isn't it, with <laughs> Mourinho, wherever he goes. Don, uh, putting aside the first result, did you, did you like the appointment? I was a little bit torn, to be honest, because I think when you look, at, look back at Pochettino's era, the five years that he was there, you know, he finished second, a third, a third in the Champions League final. So I thought... He earned the right to try and fix a lot of problems that were happening on the pitch. Players running their contracts down, etc. Uh, Deli Alley out of form. Um, so I thought he, he deserved that time to maybe have another window to get these players out and new players in and try and refresh that squad. Having said that, your thought process changes as soon as Jose comes through the door. You know, if you had asked me a fortnight ago, will Tottenham finish in the top four? I would have said no chance. Now with Jose in charge, the players are going to they're they're. they're their mindset's going to prick up. It's like being back at school where the head teacher's you know, watching every move and you've got one of the best managers in the world. Um, it's going to be one of those games, or, or sorry, one of these uh, runs of games, in my opinion, where you see Jose probably pick up an awful lot of points in the short term and get Tottenham very, very close. I was chatting to Peter Schmeichel at the weekend and I suggested that they might just pick Leicester for the top four. And Peter nearly ripped my head off when I suggested <laughs> that to him. So uh, I won't be doing that again under Peter. But um, I think under Jose, <laughs> they've got a better chance of getting in the top four than under Pochettino. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.